folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this new guy right here called Behind the Throne. Uh, it's from Ares Games, a quick little two to four player game. Takes about half an hour, maybe a little bit more than that, depending on how people play. But uh, it's a quick little card game that uh, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. But let me get down to the table and show you. Now behind the throne has a core mechanism of basically pushing your luck where you're flipping cards over from this stack of from from the deck and as long as the next card you flip over is less than the previous card that you flipped over then you can continue pushing your luck. So I have a 9, 8, 5, I'm still good, I continue going, okay, I'm still all right, so do I want to continue pushing, okay, I'm still okay. Now, at any point during that process, you can stop and say, I'm done, I'm taking these cards and they're becoming part of my tableau. But if you reach 5, you must stop, and now then all of these become part of your tableau. Now, the reason that's important is because each of these characters has special abilities to them. Now, first kind of power that there are are called manipulative powers, and those are denoted by the green shields that are on the character, uh, the, the different character cards. All right, so first of all, this character, the uh, general, gives you the ability to manipulate a card that is in the reveal row during your turn by three, minusing by three, so that you can hopefully get it underneath that previously played card so that you can keep it. The profit here allows you to look at the top card of the deck before you actually reveal it to everywhere else and then, you know, so you have a little bit of insider information there. The, <clears throat> the jester uh, basically allows you to increase uh, the card that is in the revealed row increase it by one or uh, minus it by one, decrease it by one. The assassin here allows you to do basically the same thing as the general, but it's only two. It's only a reduction of two instead of three. And then the judge here allows you to untap, I'm sorry, Magic the Gathering, I used that word, it lets you untap one of these other abilities so that you can use it again on your turn. Generally speaking, though, each power can only be used once on your turn, but this guy gives you the ability of possibly doing it more than that. The Bard and the Alchemist are what are known as protective abilities, and they are denoted by blue shields on their, on their cards. And uh, what the Bard or the Minstrel does is it allows, uh, it protects you from other people swapping cards from you on their turn. If somebody swaps cards with you, they must take your Minstrel before they can take anything else. Uh, in the very same manner, the Alchemist uh, protects you from people destroying your cards. So if somebody wants to destroy one of your cards, they have to destroy the Alchemist first before they can do other ones. So these are protecting your other cards that are getting you more points or maybe better abilities, uh, whatever you can say, but these are protective abilities. The queen and the king are what are called as prohibitive abilities. So if you have a king or a queen or a number of them in front of you in your tableau, they're going to prohibit you from doing certain kinds of actions. For example, uh, destroying cards. The only way you can destroy somebody else's card on your turn is if you have a greater number of cards in the revealed row of your turn then you have queens. So if you have two queens in your tableau, you would have to have three reveal cards out here before you could destroy somebody's card. Uh, in a similar fashion, the king prohibits your swapping ability. Now, in order to use the manipulative or the protective abilities, you have to have the stack in your tableau that has the most copies of that card on the table. With the prohibitive ones, they are always on no matter who has the most. So there are three ways basically that your, your turn can end. 
Uh, the first way is, is is if you actually get to draw up to five cards and they're all uh, sequentially less than the, than the previous one played, then your turn will end because the max you can get is five. The second way it can end is if you, uh, for example, if I pull this one over first and then I pull this one out and I don't have any way to manipulate this number, then I bust. These two guys go away over to the discard pile. Another way that your turn can end is by simply just saying, you know what, I've got enough, I'm going to stop with the cards that I have and just pull them into my tableau. So those are the three ways that you can end your turn. Now, let's say on your turn you flip over a card and wow, man, I don't have, I can't go anywhere with that and I really don't want that card. You can take this card and swap it with somebody else and then take one of their cards. Um, so if somebody got this and they say, I'm going to give this to you, uh, and I'm going to take this guy from you. And so they, this would go into their tableau, and uh, that would be that. Uh, the other thing that you can do on your turn is if, that's, you know, stacking the deck, but if you turn over, I'm going to go for it, yeah! Uh, if you turn over the same number, that gives you the ability to destroy a one card from anybody else on your turn. So you're pushing your luck on your turn, you're possibly swapping with other people on your turn, or you're destroying something uh, uh, from uh, somebody else's pile on their turn. So how do these manipulative abilities work? Well, basically it's like this. Let's say that you have the most generals here and the general gives you the ability to uh, subtract three from a revealed card in your row. So as you're going through your turn, you turn over a six. Okay, I think I can get underneath that. Oh man, I have a nine. So this busts normally, but because I have the most generals, I can tap these guys and use his ability of minus three, which makes this a six. Now, this is an interesting part because now that this is a six, these are duplicates of the same number, and that allows you to destroy somebody else's card. So you'd be able to do that uh, in the midst of your turn, and then you continue uh, turning cards over. And then you turn over another card. Oh, it's a seven. But this is a six. Actually, no, it isn't, because as soon as you start revealing another card, this one goes back to its original number. So now it's a seven, and we're good to keep going. And now we have a three and so forth and so on. So uh, the powers that work here, again, you can usually, unless you have the uh, uh, judge, which allows you to untap a power in order to use it again, uh, most of these can only be used once per turn, um, and that's that. But it's really simple. It's not difficult at all. It's just really, really fun. So that is Behind the Throne. Some of you may have uh, caught on to the Shades of Dead Man's Draw or maybe Captain Carcass in this. And uh, it's definitely there. It has that feeling. Now, one of the things that uh, differentiates this game from those, in my opinion, is the fact that the, the, uh, the powers that each card has only fires when you choose to and, they're, they're, and when it's in your tableau and you have the most. So there's a little bit more control in it. My main thing that I had with Captain and carcass is that those special powers uh, fired as they were revealed and there was just kind of a random element a chaotic element there that I didn't really care for that much but behind the throne the push your luck element is there I love that about Captain Carcass and Dead Man's Draw as well um, but the fact that you can uh, fire those abilities when you want to giving you just a little bit more control over the game uh, than with the other two predecessors now I have heard that there are variants that you can play those other games in that fashion uh, but I like that this one comes out of the box like that. It's not a variant or anything like that. It's simply that's how the game is played. You have to wait until they come back to your tableau. Uh, you have to have the most of them uh, for, for uh, you know, one through seven, uh, those powers. But I, I, really did in li I, I really did like that. Now, it's very random, very luck of the draw type thing. You can, you can turn over that one and really have nothing really good that you can do. But what I think one of the key factors of the game is remembering that swap action that you can do on your turn. You don't have to take the card that you just top decked. Uh, you can swap it with something else that maybe looks a little bit more appealing. You can, uh, and that can really hurt people's ability to do things in the game, which helps you stay up with them. It's kind of a, not really a catch up mechanism, I guess, but uh, it, it kind of feels that way because it allows you to just kind of 
hang on until you get that one draw where you kind of can start getting your tableau built and your engine going. So don't forget to swap cards. If the card that you top deck is not something that you're wanting or it's one of those times where it's a one and you don't really have anywhere to go with it, see if you can swap. Maybe get a better deal out of it that way. However, I really enjoy everything about this game. I thought, I thought the artwork was really good, kind of kooky, but also good at the same time. Uh, the length of the game is for this kind of game is just right. 30 minutes is about the max that I want to play a game like this because it can divul div devolve into uh, this whole, <laughs> turned over another one. Okay, what am I going to do now? Okay, one. Oh, turned over another one. What am I going to do now? You know, it can divulge into the, or divulge, bleh. So it can devolve into something like that with a bad shuffle. So, uh, but understand, that's not a game problem. That's just, you had a bad shuffle. That happens from time to time. I can remember many games of Shadows Over Camelot where we lost because of a bad shuffle. There's nothing we could have done about it. So uh, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. Maybe I'm being a little bit too forgiving. I don't think so, though, because at the end of the day, it's a 30-minute game. It's not that long anyway. It's supposed to be lighthearted fun. So... And it's a game. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and give two thumbs up to Behind the Throne. I uh, really enjoy this game. I want to thank Dan King for introducing it to me uh, in Texas. So uh, I was able to get a hold of it here at Dice Tower headquarters and give it a review. Really enjoy the game. I think you should go try it out and give it serious thought about purchasing as well. Two thumbs up, way up for me. I really do enjoy this game. See you guys on the flip side.